So in the previous video, I just set out um, a technique to estimate the yield to maturity of a bond using um, gold seek, and just to uh, explain that a little, little bit, we could imagine that we have the following question. We have the the stock price is given, it's a market price, it's 1,010.77. The value of the coupon is 60 per year for three years running. And then the face value of the bond is, is 1,000. Uh, what is the rate of interest consistent with a PV of 1,010? Uh, gold seek does that um, in a relatively straightforward way. Set the value of the formula to the desired values, in this case the market value of the bond, 101077, by changing the parameter input for the formula to uh, whatever is the rate. So keep changing this cell, C4, the discount rate, until the value of the bond converges to 101077. And of course that's done and it's 056 and that's also consistent with the initial framing the question where we asked what's the value value of a bond where the coupons when discounted 5.6% and the face also being discounted 5.6% what's the value of the bond when the discount rate is 5.6 and we found that the bond was 1010.77 and here we find that using gold seek we can replicate that result. Now in, uh, I introduced the bisection technique in the previous, so maybe I just write that bisection technique. Bisection technique. And the bisection technique is no more than um, an automation of a grid search technique. So we estimate, if you like, we take the code that was there, we call up the function. So let's copy and paste, go back into the spreadsheet and we just paste the function um, so basically if we we have this uh, VBA routine and it's basically estimating the yield to maturity of a bond where we take the first entry into parentheses as the coupon rate the second entry is equal to the time to maturity the third entry is the face of 1000 the fourth entry is the periodicity or the frequency of the coupon payment and the final figure 1010 is the target value or the market value of the bond that we observe so we want an interest rate consistent with these parameter inputs and of course if the market value of the bond is a thousand and ten then we can say the value of the discount rate the yield to maturity ytm is 5.6 percent and um, how does the code work we well we call up the function as mentioned in the previous video clip this function is the present value of the annuity formula um, being applied and applying the discount to the face. So it's a present value uh, of a bond formula. And we call that function and we say if we know the coupon, the time to maturity, the face, the periodicity of the coupon, and the market value of the bond, then set out initial seed values for the discount rate which if, if we observe 
the PVM is the discount function that is applied to estimate the, the present value of the bond. It's referenced down here and is saying the coupon rate, that might be easier to view it here, the coupon rate, the interest rate, so it's the second value here, is equal to so the interest rate is given initially as the average of H, which is 200%, plus L, which is 0, divided by 2. So if we start off with 200%, plus 0, divided by 2, that's 100% for the interest rate. T is to 3 years, the face is 1000, and M is 1. The value we would obtain, if H is very, very high, the value we would obtain for this present value function for the bond would be much lower than the target value. So what would happen would be we would take, because the value is uh, much lower than the target value, the, the, the target value is 1010, this value would be absolutely tiny. We would use not the first, but the second function. And so the new H as we go through the loop, the new H that would emerge would be uh, 200 or 2 plus 0 divided by 2 is 1 and the new H would become 1 and then H and 0, H and L, the 100% and 0% would go back into the loop as the interest rate and again discounting at 100 plus 0, so that would be 50%. Again, we would expect that the value of the function would be less than the target value. That would mean we would skip through the first line, go to the next, and that the new h would now be the old h of 50 plus 0 divided by 2 and 25%. And that would keep happening until the value of this was less than the target and in that instance the new L would not be zero but would be the average of H, the old H and L. And so the H would tend to fall, L would tend to rise and they would keep falling and rising until the difference between both would be very very low. So again we could try that again. Uh, what if we thought, let's take a look at um, the bond price. Again, this is for, let's say, a 20-year bond. And we're looking at an interest rate of, let's say, 0 0.045, right? In that case, a bond price of 826.64. So or we should leave this at 6%. If this was 0 0.045, then the bond price is higher at 196. Okay, so 196.45, let's take that. So going back into the function, again, this was 20 years. The It's um, M of 2. M of 2. Okay, what bond price, what interest rate is consistent with a bond price of 196.45? Okay, so let's look at this function again. So the target value now would be 1196.95, I think. And the value is 4.48, so let's check that again. 19645 119645 119645 and we get an interest rate of 4.5%. So we could remove this bond price here. We take out that formula there. And we could put back in, we could look at 
delete these cells, delete, shift up, and we could remove that and try that again. Delete, shift up, cells. Okay, so if the bond price, if the target value, let's say target, was equal to 119645, 119.45, and referenced, instead of putting that value in, we put in a value, we just reference the cell. Of course, we get the same value again. What, what is the value of the bond consistent with? Let's take this, this out. Okay, so we could try that again. If we said the value of the bond was equal to a thousand, what should be the interest rate? The discount rate or the yield to maturity, we know the answer to this. When the market price of the bond is equal to its face, the discount rate should be equal to 6%. If we hit return, we'll get 6% as well. So it appears as if this function is working and work, this bisection function is working and it's working well. Okay, let's take that.